Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Elizabeth with East Bay Mud, and um, those of you that have been on the council a while may have seen a similar presentation given by our director, Xavier Irias, who's formerly had my position. So some of that is repeat, but some of that is new information. So just, um, I was going to go for an intro to East Bay Mud, our dam safety program, talk a little bit specifically about um, Chabot and Upper San Leandro dams, which are in your area, and about our emergency preparedness program. Um, East Bay Mud is your water company. Um, <laughs> we um, provide um, water and wastewater treatment services to parts of Alameda and Contra Costa County. Our main water source is um, the McCullough watershed um, near Valley Springs area, and it comes um, through three large aqueducts to our service area. Our primary water supply reservoir is Party Dam. It has about a six month um, supply of water in a normal year. Um, as I mentioned, comes by three aqueducts through the delta, um, and that provides 95% of the district's water, and these aqueducts are about 82 miles long, so significant conveyance. And it comes to our service area, and we have 1.3 million water customers, and our infrastructure consists of about 4,000 miles of pipe, and that's all the pipe in the streets bringing you know, water to your homes, um, 126 pumping plants, 165 um, reservoirs and tanks throughout the service area to provide drinking water, and in 122 pressure zones. What we mean is zones because we're gravity fed between um, sea level and 1,400 uh, feet above sea level. So about our dam safety and dam safety program. We have about 31 dams. Two are the upcountry ones that I mentioned, and then um, 29 in the service area. Five are terminal reservoirs, so large like USL, Chabot, Lafayette, that type of reservoir. And the remainder are, um, yes? Elizabeth, we don't know the abbreviation USL. Oh, Upper San Leandro, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, reservoir. Um, the rest are smaller um, dam type impoundments in the water service area um, that, that have dams that um, can find them. And you'll notice also this map shows the faulting in our area, um, so the various faults that are, are near us. And you'll see it's, it's almost as if we planned them to line up on the fault zone. And the reality is many of these developed at the turn of the century where people observe, you know, we have faulting. That's kind of a flat area in the hill, so a perfect place. There's often springs, water sources develop there, and so that's, that's why they're there. But of course, because of the seismic setting, that's why you know, we have an active dam safety program and we do look at the seismic vulnerability of all of these facilities. So our dam, dam safety program really focuses on monitoring. Um, we have visual inspections of every one of our dams monthly and each one has a form similar to that that um, it lists various important aspects of the dam and observations about them and we have trained personnel that goes to each facility, walks it down completely and looks at this. We also have instrumentation, so piezometers which measure the water level within the dam, um, monitors that uh, monitor seepage flow, and um, so we take uh, surveys about twice a year to check if there's any elevation changes. And most of that's manual except for San Pablo um, Dam, which you may know we recently upgraded, now has automated systems for that, and that's something that we want to advance as we do dam <coughs> upgrades. Um, we get a complete report on each dam and the instrumentation, and those are reviewed by engineers monthly. Um, we complete analyses and evaluations as needed, meaning that if we observe some anomaly in the data, or from time to time we do a periodic seismic safety review. And we perform repairs as needed, so if we observe um, monthly that there's maybe some erosion or weeds in the spillway, we take care of that right away. Or if a seismic study shows there are some problems, then we plan a capital project to, to remedy those. So specifically about your dams. So the two are um, Chabot, Upper San Leandro, shown on the map. And Chabot was built in 1875, I'll have some more details on that, and it was upgraded in 1980. We completed a seismic evaluation in 2005 on that dam, and I'll go into that in more detail. And there's um, a, a more detailed topo map. Um, Upper San Leandro was built in 1926, 
A whole new dam was built in 1977 to modern dam standards, and um, we're completing a seismic evaluation of that dam now. So Lake Chabot, as you know, is a um, local reservoir that provides emergency water supply, some flood control, and mainly is a recreation center um, for the area. Um, there's a photo of the dam, if you're not familiar with it. So I mentioned that it was built in 1875 using um, tried and true but very old technology, um, basically by wagon, horse-drawn carriages, um, earth fill brought to the site and deposited and compacted. And even though it seems like a very low-tech method, it was quite effective in making a dense, appropriate embankment. Um, as I mentioned, the seismic safety is periodically evaluated, and so in the 70s, as a result of the San Fernando earthquake in 1971, where there was a near dam failure in Southern California, all the agencies revisited that um, seismic safety of their dams, and we thought, thought, oh well, we need some larger buttress, and so the, the area shown there, a modern compacted fill was placed. And um, it, the capacity overall of your reservoir is 3.3 billion gallons, but as you may observe, if you've gone there many times, it's not even close to capacity. So uh, the results of our recent study show that the dam is safe. The dam will remain stable. The crest could settle about three and a half feet, and there's no hazard to the community because, again, you typically have 23 feet of free board there, so even with that level of, of slumping, um, there, there wouldn't be any water release. Um, I'll go back to the slide before that shows this sluice fill at the toe. So most of it was compacted by wagon fill. The sluice fill, okay, thank you. Um, was um, constructed with a hydraulic fill method and it isn't as dense. And we think that it may liquefy, meaning that you know, if materials aren't densely compacted, when it shakes, they'll move together a little bit and the water pressure there causes it to, to become momentarily weak and so there'll be some slumping. Um, we're looking at an upgrade project now and I don't have really many specifics in terms of exactly how much earth we're moving and impacts, but it will involve removing and replacing um, the sluice fill material. Um, again, because it's an earth fill dam, you will have some displacements, but um, you, we're only expecting minor cracking because its soil will kind of move, it's not like a rigid concrete structure, and so again, the dam is safe but needs some repairs. Um, we're right now completing some additional field investigations to define exactly what is the extent of that sluice fill and, and have a better idea of the quantity that we need to repair. We um, will start a formal planning and CEQA process in the fall and that's when we'll be going out to communities and getting input um, on the project and talking about specific impacts. We plan to then design over the next year and construction about, um, you know, 2013 to the 2014 time frame. So that brings us to the other major reservoir, Upper San Leandro. Uh, another water supply um, reservoir. This one is used more for day-to-day -day water supply, provides some flood control benefit and also a very picturesque area um, recreation resource in, in the community. And I mentioned, you know, there was the original dam, and you can see that there. Um, when that was studied, it was decided, you know what, we just need a new dam. And so this is the new dam. It is a modern zone dam um, built to modern standard, compacted with modern construction equipment. So it was totally rebuilt. Um, it has a clay core to stop seepage. And actually, even Chabot, for the time that it was built, had that feature in there compacted materials in a drain to collect any drainage and, and safely take it away from the dam shell. Um, the whole capacity of that reservoir is 13.5 billion gallons. Um, as I mentioned, we're right now completing a seismic study and, and we're um, finishing it up. It, it'll, it's going to be submitted to the California Department of Safety of Dams who is the regulator that regulates all dams in the state of California for their review and approval. 
um, and we're expecting to complete this in August. And the preliminary results are that there will be less than one foot of crest settlement, which is basically the minimum amount that, that is possible. The dam is completely safe for ongoing surface. <clears throat> and no work will be done associated with, with the dam. Um, so I wanted to end a little bit about our emergency preparedness and then you know, take questions that we might have. Steve Brew is here, who is our um, emergency preparedness and safety officer. Um, Steve, did you want to make a few remarks or maybe I will cover it if you can add? Go forward, you're doing a great right. job, thanks. <laughs> So um, the district has an emergency operations plan, so basically a plan laid out of what we would do in an emergency. An emergency could be various things, an earthquake, flood, fire in the area. And um, specifically with respect to dam safety, we've prepared inundation maps for each dam. And um, there's pictures of the ones for Chabot here. And those have been provided to you for then you know, emergency response notification. The modeling for those was done in the mid-70s and then updated in the 80s. It is a very conservative estimate in that it assumes the dam is completely full and fails all at once. Very, very, very low odds of that actually happening. Um, so again, it's a worst case. We are uh, doing a project now to update those um, maps using modern computer modeling that will be more accurate and still be for the worst case scenario, but again, for terms of emergency response, you want to estimate the maximum extent to uh, plan for evacuation. And um, so, again, we, we have that in place. And to make sure, you know, it's, the plan is one thing to have on a shelf, but what, you know, what's going to happen when something actually occurs, and so we do practice our plan um, periodically, at least, um, is, Steve can speak more, we have an annual complete <coughs> plan, we in our group for dam safety also offset, separate from that, have an exercise every year. Um, I mentioned um, our dam inspections that we do monthly. The, um, the individuals there are trained to do the inspections and they know the dams. And these are the same people that are the first responders in case we have an event. And how we respond is that we have this chart and you can see on there all of our, our dams plotted. And this is gridded. And depending on what the reported magnitude of quake is, we would inspect dams that are within this radius from the epicenter. And now the USGS has um, their site that almost immediately has quake information. And we're all signed up to get an email or text message um, about quakes in our area so that the first responder is notified. They all have this chart. And so if it was um, you know, 6.0 earthquake and we knew where it was in the epicenter, we could grid off of this and see, all right, do we need to inspect anything or not? And so even for minor quakes, which do happen, I mean, at least once a year, we get a four or five that, that we barely feel, we go out and we inspect our dams afterwards. Um, so in an event of an emergency, uh, our emergency operations plan for dams and, and in, in general has us notifying our state regulators and also um, in your group, we would mobilize our emergency operations team to assess the situation, coordinate efforts, and then city and county OES groups would receive information and manage emergency response, including evacuation in the, again, very unlikely event there would be a problem with the dams. So in summary, you know, we, we operate about 30 dams um, in our local area. Um, the dams have withstood earthquakes in the past um, with no problems. Um, the dam safety program involves regular oversight, um, state oversight by our regulators, regular inspections, ongoing monitoring and emergency planning. Both dams in your areas have been studied recently and are safe. And in an emergency, we would work with your community as appropriate. So that's kind of my overview. Did people have questions? Steve, did you have anything to add? 
Only real quickly, in terms of emergency operations and emergency planning at the district, we conducted uh, over the last year 37 exercises at East Bay Mud, exercises with our emergency operations team, uh, all of which have been uh, extensively trained in using the incident command system. Uh, my team, uh, my group of people in my office, uh, serve as the liaison officers. Uh, we work with the uh, operational area uh, offices in both Alameda and Contra Costa County uh, here in our service area. And, uh, and with Sacramento County, with uh, Calaveras and Amador County, San Joaquin County, uh, from our source water in the Sierra foothills all the way to the bay. And so uh, our, our outreach, if you will, is extensive in terms of emergency preparedness and emergency operations. We have uh, an emergency operations team that consists of uh, quite a bit of depth, three layers deep, uh, probably 160 people in total uh, in support of emergency operations. And uh, all of those people have been trained at uh, with, with FEMA certifica uh, certified classes and ICS 100, 200, 700, 800, 300, 400. Those of you in fire service probably understand all of that. And uh, so we have acronym poisoning with, uh, with FEMA ICS certification and, uh, and we have a pretty skilled uh, staff. So we certainly work with Elizabeth's groups, uh, uh, her group relative to uh, dam safety, public awareness, and uh, an emergency response planning. Thank mm -hmm. you.